Okay guys, so in the first episode I laid out a rough plan for what I was going to do for water cooling slash to easy cooling my case. And after posting that I have had some very constructive discussions with some people about it and I have, they have managed to convince me to probably change my plans. I was going to go intentionally go for something with a small amount of radiator just as an example that it can be done but they have managed to convince me to not do that and put lots of rads in which is probably a good call because frankly I was probably going to change it the day after I'd done it and added more rads in uh, one of other than just trying to deal with a small amount of radiators I wanted to deal with a small amount of radiators because it enabled me to put it in here uh, without having to make any modifications uh, not even to the SSDs down here uh, which really did limit what I could put in there, which was essentially a, uh, a, uh, a 280. I can theoretically fit a 360 rad in here, uh, 120 times 3, but it can only be a very, very narrow one because the gap between here and here is so small, and I wasn't very keen on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to intend on buying a completely new case exactly the same. Oh, now the reason why I like this case is because it's what I call a left hand case. I don't know what the name is for it, but it's the other way around than every other case. See the, the front is here and the back is here. Now normally it, the front would be here and the back would be there. Now the way it works in my house is you kind of see it from here more than here. So it looks better this way around. And I really like this case because it has all the sound deadening in it and this here. And of course it has some great massive 180 penetrators. So it's really good for air cooling and I was going to effectively throw those away. But now I'm going to use them. So the current plan is to get a relatively thin 360 rad, but a 360 as in 2180s, which ends up being 400 long, or slightly longer than 400, and that's actually incredibly tight to fit in there. For example, if I measure that, sorry about the bounciness, yeah, it actually doesn't fit, well, it doesn't fit through the hole because that's in the way but it theoretically fits between down there and there but these this sticks out a little bit and that would mean that I can't put the SSDs there now the mounting little things here which you can't really see the uh, mounting points for the SSDs are raised, risen or raised from the bottom of the case so there is a person which has had put a larger radiator in it, as in thickness, and they had to cut those out. Now I'd be interested to know if I can just smack those with a rubber mallet to push them down. But that does mean that I need to remove my SSDs and mount them on the back of here. And I'm probably going to have to cut this back. I theoretically don't have to, but there's a, it sticks out just a little bit. And it would be really good if I could cut that off. Just that small amount, that 10 millish. It's in part because this is actually rolls round for strength reasons, but it's going to block a bit of flow. But really, the reason for that is that if I could just move these, if I had that extra 10 mil, I could put a bit of a shroud. And I'm kind of addicted to shrouds, especially with these massive fans, because the center is so huge. The dead spot. And same goes in the corner. Now, also, Unfortunately, for strength reasons, they've added this lip around here. Now, annoyingly, that is narrower than the 180. So this here is actually covering part of the fan, and that can't be good for noise. And if I'm going to put a big radiator on it, it's going to be a problem. It's going to block the air actually being able to get to the entire radiator. So I'm going to have to cut that off, and probably cut that off, and... If I go for a 45mm radiator, which is what I can currently buy, that'll end up with like a 5mm shroud, which is essentially the width of that. 
I'd really like to buy the Hardware Labs GTS, but I can't seem to actually find it. It's actually much narrower, so I'd end up with a pretty good shroud. Uh, but it's if I once I cut this off, uh, it would let me obviously fit it closer. So I'd end up with a you know either a five or ten. I'm oh, sorry, either five or fifteen mil shroud. And that should leave from that corner into the corner here, which is about 320. Now 320 should allow me to fit a, what's it going to be, a 280 radiator in the bottom, which would be nice. So that means I could have a 360, which is 180 by 180, what, well, 180 by 360 uh, and uh, 140 times 2 or 140 by 280 in there which would be a serious amount of cooling now this is all I won't be bothering with push pull in either of the situations I'll probably push the air out through the bottom though uh, I, and I'm not sure that's going to work I might have to pull the air out I'm not going to blow it in which is technically the right thing to do because of convection. The reason for that is that I have a lot of problems with uh, with dust. And that's why I really like this case. It's got a massive, easily removable dust filter that doesn't get too filled. And if I suck the air in from the bottom and blow it up, I know that I'm going to be sucking up a whole lot of dirt. Yes, I can fit an air filter on the bottom, but that's going to be really, really painful to get off. And I have personally not had good experience with the magnetic air filters the ones that I've tried they're actually being almost too restrictive and they get blocked in seemingly minutes uh, so I'll probably end up pushing the air in here and pushing it down because that means the air is filtered but technically it would be best to blow the air in I guess because of convection but you could say you're blowing the hot air into the case uh, but we'll see what happens that means I need to fit a, uh, a resin there, which it's going to be in here, I guess. But I'm not sure that's going to really fit. I really like my D5s or 655s, as we used to call them back in the day. I'm not sure there's really going to be enough space and enough height. Possibly if I push it over this, it might be. So I'm going to buy a, I don't know if I've mentioned this, I'm going to buy a completely new case because now I'm talking about cutting this off, cutting this back, cutting a massive hole in the bottom here uh, and potentially I'm going to have to cut some up here because like it is going to be really tough to fit that radiator in there and I have to do something about these mounting points blocking the radiator in there. So I could of course just use the same case literally the same case. The problem with that is that that means I would have to do everything in one go and it wouldn't make a very interesting video series. It would be more interesting if I bought another case and did it slowly. And I am intending on showing how I personally made the changes. I always find it somewhat a bit of a bummer how people make lots of mod changes like hardcore customization but they never actually show you how they actually did it. And I know I'm not a perfect modder. I've done a lot but I'll try and show you and explain how I actually went about cutting this and modding this. I'm sure there'll be better ways, I'm sure there'll be worse ways, but at least it might help some people that are interested in doing some mods and they don't actually know actually physically how you actually cut a case up and still have it looking any good. Because I can tell if you put a tell you right now, if you stick a jigsaw on this and try and cut this, it's gonna look really, really bad. So that's the modified plan, which is going to take heaps longer now because I have to buy a new case. And I'm now probably going to have to buy two radiators. So it's going to take a long time. It always was going to take a long, long time. It's going to take most of this year because of the cost. And while the cost might not seem too bad for you guys, you need to remember that I'm in New Zealand. So anything well not anything, virtually everything I buy I have to buy from the US and import it into New Zealand 
which has problems with uh, tax and postage like postage is roughly a third more on the price if you buy something for 100 us it's going to cost me another 30 34 40 dollars us to post it to me and potentially import tax of 15 percent on top of that so it's certainly not a cheap place to be doing all this uh yeah but anyway that is the plan the revised plan now you've had comments on it before please keep the comments rolling and maybe i'll change my plan again i shall see you on the next one don't forget to subscribe pop us some likes if you want that would be nice um definitely comment tell me i'm doing a bad job good job a left job or a right job uh, and uh, we'll definitely take your comments into consideration like this is essentially changing because someone was so passionate about it and it, they're probably right i should probably do a, a full job once instead of a half job once and then redo it again properly later anyway i'm rambling i shall see you on the next one guys bye bye